welcome everybody. Thank you uh, for this all all this audience because I I remember last time I was presented here a lecture for this audience for ten years I think on the conference in Budapest and uh, and so this is a comeback and uh, first of all I want to present my uh, author's uh, Laszlo who is known, I think, in, in this community with his GIS and, and other uh, presentations. And Peter who is a, a newcomer who was uh, at home during the COVID time and nothing to do. And then uh, he realized that, that he can find a lot of new sites for this. Not, this is not a real project. This is a hobby project, I would say what I'm working for 30 years about. So, <clears throat> uh, the area which is in Hungary is not far from here, no more than two hours to the north by car. And uh, <clears throat> okay. And we have uh, a quite long historical background for the researches. I mean, uh, Sandor Nogradi, who started uh, at all in Hungary, uh, area of photography for archaeological purposes. He made already in 1929 uh, some pictures about uh, the site, Nagyberki uh, Salacska, which is situated uh, in Transdanubia. We're just going to take a pause because, as you'll notice, there's some terrible feedback. Um, we're just going to try and sort the last speaker. It's okay. We're just going to let well, then we'll kind of But we have enough. In the meantime, while we are waiting, another uh, information for you. I would ask you for this first coffee break for all of you who haven't seen the posters to take a look at them and authors to stand by their posters uh, because we will have to take them down during the lunch hour and somehow mobility week <laughs> to remove everything from here.
Let's start again. Just very big just go back. Yeah. So and then double is that all right? We'll start from the beginning, retake record. Okay? Thank you so much. So I asked to go back. So my or can I say re come back. Uh here after ten years you can you can uh, see now uh the set the 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 region is situated not far from here, uh, two kilometers by car uh, to the north in Hungary. And uh, one of the most important sites here, very close to Croatia, this is uh, Nagyberki Salacska, which was photographed almost for 100 years ago. Uh, these are glass negatives made by Sándor Nogradi who was a cartographer, but uh, interested on, on air archaeology as air at all, and he realized that uh, these are archaeological sites. And uh, <clears throat> the next huge step was made by uh, Ivan Kuzma in the region, as far as I know, who uh, started already in 1988 uh, his first flights to find uh, burial mounds in northwestern Slovakia. Uh, in Hungary, we have some very interesting archival orthophotos uh, from the age uh, of the Cold War era. Uh, one of them you can see here on the border zone or borderline of. Austria and and Hungary in Felső Csatár Sándor with uh, a lot of uh, quite uh, well shown uh, burial mounds, including this big one, uh, just on the on the border zone between Hungary and and Austria. So uh, the next step was more or less the French-Hungarian French -Hungarian cooperation in 1993, led by René Gauguin, the famous pioneer of aerial archaeology at all, who was my uh, teacher in aerial archaeology. And uh, one of the very first photos that he made in Hungary uh, in, on this uh, uh, first campaign, it was made in Erzász Halombotta, which is uh, absolutely in five minutes to fly from the, the Budapest airfields. So the very first uh, aerial archaeological site, as you can see uh, already here, uh, he found a burial, a plugged uh, burial mound. And uh, a small collection of, uh, of this new uh, identified site, you can see here uh, already from the late uh, 90s, which was, um, which was a so-called pioneer epoch for, for aerial archaeology in Hungary and in the neighboring countries as well at all. Um, <clears throat> just take a look, a small look, what we can see if we are looking for burial mounds because it is quite important to understand the real situation with, with, uh, with uh, these uh, archaeological features. Uh, one of them which is very important, that obviously you can see um, somehow the discoloration and also uh, the circular ditch. The circular ditch, which is uh, not always presented, not in every case, but most of the cases of the burial mounds, we have um, circular ditches. And uh, so these two uh, features together uh, are a, always good argument for, uh, for um, an interpretation of these uh, crop marks as burial mounds. And Sometimes you can see, or we can see, also the burial chambers, but it's not, it is not always 
uh, visible, uh, I would say, um, very rare. The burial chambers are very rare on the, on the area of photos. And here you can see some uh, uh, more detail. This is the same burial mounds, one of my first uh, area photos of ever. And uh, here you can see the disc, oh, sorry, the discoloration, which is the, the mound itself and the uh, circular ditch. The circular ditch in, in Hungary in a normal form, uh, about six meter wide, two, two and a half meter deep, and uh, the diameter uh, range about uh, 42 to 20 meters, so it's, it's different. It could be di very different. And uh, <clears throat> another interesting uh, observation in case of, of barrier mounds that we can find not only as uh, crop marks, but as soil marks and as wet marks as well. Here you can see very good uh, uh, soil marks from the mound itself and the wet marks of the circular ditches on the same side. I have to say that Erzas Halamata was my study area to understand how it, how it is working with with uh, with uh, burial mounds uh, on a on a site which is which is quite well known uh, in archaeological literature. Uh, also, we have chance to find them during the early crop mark period season as you can see on these pictures. And this is the good chance to, to find them on Google Earth imagery. And luckily we have, in this case, uh, very close to each other, the two, two images. So you can see a little bit the differences uh, between the uh, round resolution, et cetera, spectral resolution, et cetera. I want, don't want to go in uh, the technical details. And uh, we have also uh, good examples from Erd for the burial chamber itself. This is uh, Alfalfa or Lucerne. Uh, uh, I hope you know this plant in English. So uh, this is one of the best preserved uh, burial chamber that we can see on this mostly plugged area of the Erzas Halombatta uh, Tumulus uh, or Barrier Mount Cemetery. So uh, going farther, shoot to another site on the Danube, uh, where you can see not only the circular ditch, but uh, the elevated part of the mound itself. And uh, here we have uh, our last long made um, an essay with, using with archive images uh in this ways we can he he made a digital surface model uh which was very interesting from that point that you can realize uh not only this uh body amounts but some others in the already densely bushed area of the site which means that uh we we have uh, almost the same maquette as uh as uh, Michael uh, presented us uh, yesterday. So we, you can't go in anymore, but you can, using uh, with these historical images, you can have uh, uh, much more information as you could have, for example, using uh, um, LiDAR imagery, or LiDAR models. Um, last but not least, uh, Going back to Nagyberki Solacska, which was the very first site uh, um, researched by no Sándor Nogradi for almost 100 years. On the top uh, picture, you can see the, the burial mounds with elevated structure, and the same uh, situation uh, is on uh, the bottom picture. Uh, which is uh, interesting from that point of view that the discoloration is exactly um, uh, on that barrier mound which has this elevated part. 
not uh, the the other one just uh, just the elevated burial mount they are still uh, they have still the, the the mount itself no more than i think one one and a half meter uh, high so and we have of course from this region a lot of uh, completely eroded or plugged uh, burial mounds where we can see just the circular ditches and in the farther part of this lecture or this presentation i will show you almost only uh, circular ditches uh, which means that uh, in, in pannonian agricultural conditions we have more or less uh, uh, only this part presented from the, the, the burial mounds, the circular ditches. As you can see on this uh, picture uh, in West Kenya, Hungary, uh, for those who have good eyes, you, can, you are right, not only burial mounds, but uh, a lot of uh, other feature you can, uh, you can uh, realize on the picture. So, um, we have uh, had a quite interesting and, and internationally good uh, developed project with Austria, uh, Slovenia, Croatia, uh, and with, with uh, institutional partners from Hungary, where we collected all the existing data for burial mounds uh, in this uh, territory, in this region, uh, which was an up-to-date uh, uh, collection in uh, 2019, just before the COVID, we finished this work. And uh, after Laszlo uh, put it together with the Roman age tumulus cemeteries, which, have, uh, which we have also in Pannonia, and it is very interesting to see that uh, somehow they are complementary, which means for me that uh, I would say we have to check mostly or a lot of this uh, so-called Roman sites, whether they are maybe older or partly older, as in the case of, of, uh, of some sites we have already realized. So um, this is also a way uh, not just using historical maps uh, and so on to identify so-called new uh, burial mounds. We have to ask our, our co uh, colleagues uh, to, to identify for early Iron Age burial mounds. So uh, this year uh, I found a totally unknown uh, site in Baku Incentivan, which was uh, uh, which is on the on the uh, picture now, on four platforms. One of them is a conventional, traditional aerial archaeological photo. The second one on the top of the right, this is a UAV or drone image. Uh, on the <clears throat> on the left uh, bottom, you can see the so-called land parcel information system. I don't know whether in this audience is enough known that this system, which is developed by the European Union, and which is uh, which is uh, going in in each three years uh, through our countries to uh, control the land parcel uh, system or changes in land parcel system. Uh, which is a very, very important um, source because uh, instead of the, the old uh, orthophotography, they are working not in um, uh, out of the vegetation season, but in the early uh, summertime season. And that's why it, we have uh, much more information for crop marks in this system, as you have seen, I think in the case of Martin yesterday, this is, um, I think the same or partly the same system in Czech Republic. And this is free available. 
And uh, the last one, this is uh, Google Earth imagery, which is very interesting that it was uh, useful also in August, which means that we have here uh, three uh, cases with wheat as crop marks, and the last one is, uh, I think, uh, corn. So uh, this is also an important factor. Um, I would say this is very, very important, uh, not just working with, uh, with technological aspects, but also with our uh, plants, with our agricultural background, if you are working with crop marks, because uh, somehow this is the real limit now, not the technology itself, but the, the plants. For example, in case of, of wheat, uh, you can see the rows if you are too close to the sides, which means that uh, this is a natural um, um, limit to find uh, archaeological features, uh, which is, which is uh, approximately uh, uh, calculated using the data for, for, uh, for uh, the wheat, for example. In line, we have no, no more than two centimeter distance between the plants and between the lines in Hungary, about 12 to 15 centimeters. So this is a natural limit uh, to use or uh, platforms, I would say. So going back to this land parcel information system, this is um, very good and very uh, useful also for uh, uh, our purposes, like you can see here on, on the, the top, we have also not on not, not well visible, but the burial chambers or the graves itself in uh, in in the surrounded by by the circular ditches. Um, finishing this lecture, I would say uh, an example from Lovashberin, which is um, which is a good example how these platforms could uh, work together. The, the site was found in a very late time, uh, 1930, almost by the end of the day. You can see on the pictures that we have almost no uh, visibility, or very, very, uh, the sunrise is, is going down deeply. And in this time, using the land person information system, you can't find any more sites because they have uh, a regulation to stop the work at uh, 1530, which means all the, all the time which can use the shadow effect is, doesn't work for, for this land parcel information system. And in my practice, I start my work at that time. So this is completely complementary or worse. If you, I hope you understand the situation. That this was the case in Lovasberin, that uh, I found the site in the, with this very late time, and then realized that, aha, uh -huh, we have uh, this site very well shown on the pictures of uh, the orthophotography, what, what they have made, but using only the discoloration, not the shadow effect. Oh, and uh, we have repeatedly uh, made flights, and summing up, we have uh, made also a geophysical prospection, which is not the best one, because this is a draft uh, uh, form and you can see finally the the, the burial ditches from very uh, from the various uh, sources like uh, traditional aerial archaeology or orthophotography and geophysics 
and all these are complementary. Sometimes you have uh, overlaps, but uh, all these are complementary, and we have uh, realized the same in the case of of air sasvalombata, where we have a lot of pictures in the in the last uh, 25 years, but more than 80 percent of the total. Uh, um, collection of burial mounds, which uh, nowadays we have 370 uh, completely. This is these are the data is coming they are coming from uh, uh, geophysical prospection. And uh, if we are lucky to have this this uh, lot of data from uh, from different sources, uh, geophysical prospection respectively. We have to uh, applaud for those people uh, always who started to find these uh, sites, uh, like Istvan Gershi, who was the first photographer of this site in Erzasholombatsa. Uh, so, thank you very much for your attention.